Well, nothing says congratulations like a 62-gun salute. That was the scene today in London to mark the 60th anniversary of the Queen's coronation. One of a series of events this week, including a return to Westminster Abbey, where she was crowned. Even now, at 87, there's no thought of retirement. She has said the job is for life. But as the CBC's Susan Ormiston explains, there are growing signs of a royal job share. Longevity is in the Queen's genes. And at 87, she looks the picture of health, very much in charge of the family firm. All of whom turned out for London's Chelsea Flower Show and did a lot of kissing, rarely seen from any generation of Windsors. Prince Harry escorted his grandmother to see the garden he helped create for an African charity. She liked it. Sixty years ago this week, a young Princess Elizabeth took on a job bestowed on her by heredity. Westminster Abbey is honoring her again, displaying a new portrait by artist Ralph Hymans. From all accounts, uh, the Abbey is a very special place for the Queen personally and for her family. In terms of the impression of we all grew up with the Queen in many ways, so as the Queen stands and reflects, I think we empathise. We are so used to the Queen's continuity, 60 years of steady reign. She's committed time and again she will serve for life. But the palace is now quietly but deliberately messaging that she will begin to divest some of her duties to Prince Charles, in a way softening the ground for when he becomes King. Last month's state opening of Parliament was an undeniable tip-off to the future. For the first time, accompanying the Queen and Prince Philip was the heir, Prince Charles, and a regally dressed Camilla. I think to see her there wearing a tiara of Charles's grandmother, I think that's a very strong signal from the palace saying, you know, she is one of us. Peter Conradi, author of The King's Speech, has just written a book on European monarchies called The Great Survivors. Nothing happens by accident with the royal family. I think what we're seeing is a gradual kind of transition. It's, it's, it's not so much a takeover by the younger generation, it's almost a, a merger, one could say. Tip two came with the news the Queen would not go to the Commonwealth Conference in Sri Lanka. In her place, Prince Charles. But, I mean, Peter Hunt is a BBC royal correspondent. Queen and Charles in job share. Um, it's a great headline, but I think the truth is slightly more sophisticated than that. I think what we're in, in Canada, in the UK, is the reality of a Queen who is getting older, who's fit and well now. She's 87. What will she be like in five years, in 10 years? So the British crown is being modernized, even though it won't pass to a successor for many years. When Elizabeth became queen, there were no mobile phones, the internet was unheard of, and graffiti was illegal, not street art. So what do Brits think about succession? Well, a recent poll showed they're divided. Only 53% now think she should reign for life. And that figure weakening this spring. Conversely, her eldest son, the heir, is gaining support for his aptitude to be king. Half the country now say Charles would make a good king, and that's up over 10%. At the time of the royal wedding, polls suggested William bested his father to be king. Today, 47% prefer Charles, a distinct shift. palace is actively managing a succession strategy and it's having an effect. Consider the heir and his mother at last year's Diamond Jubilee concert. Your Majesty, Mummy. A few crowd-pleasing words and his profile spiked. 
people are reminded every now and then with these images that there is the son here, he's very well qualified in their eyes, and we will bring him on every now and then. Never mind. Let's put on a hand grenade. Royal watchers say Charles and William are close. <clears throat> and let's the fact that my eldest son is here today uh, as well in order to uh, support his ageing father uh, is hugely appreciated. And that William has no interest leapfrogging his father, even if some Brits would like just that. The next king is not some sort of X Factor style contest. We, the public in UK and Canada, have no say in it. The 90s, at the time of the Diana and Charles, uh, the, 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 the failure of their marriage, there would have been courtiers who would have talked about it. But now the acceptance is Charles is the next person and William is the person after that. Even Camilla, once scorned, is enjoying a quiet acceptance orchestrated by a subtle PR job. She still gets negative ratings, but her standing is better than it was. The only squabble left is whether she'll be queen or princess consort. Charles, meanwhile, is being tested. The joke Brits love to tell is the queen won't step down because she can't trust him. In Britain, the monarch is supposed to be apolitical, but Prince Charles is known for his so-called black spider letters, 27 notes scrawled to cabinet ministers over nine months, urging his opinions on such things as healthcare, architecture, and the environment. Simply, we are arguing that Prince Charles is unelected and should have no part to play in political decisions. The Guardian Media Group has gone to the High Court to get those letters released. The government is using a rare veto to block them. He has got his own opinions, which he is pressing on government ministers. And they're saying that the letters had to be kept secret because Prince Charles's perceived neutrality would be undermined. Are they not acknowledging that he has been very political in his past. Yes, I mean, I think that's the fatal flaw in their argument. It is up to the public to decide whether or not they think that the prince should be meddling and dabbling in, in public policy. Queen Elizabeth II has held her family together in spite of threats, scandals, and tragedy, shoring up the monarchy. I mean, what we're essentially seeing is a sort of a or well, the public face of the royal family, kind of boiling down to essentially the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, Charles and Camilla, uh, William and Kate, plus Harry. So those, those kind of key seven, the magnificent seven, maybe we can call them. The transfer of power will be an evolution, not a revolution, and it won't come suddenly. The Queen seems to me to be absolutely loyal, devoted and committed to carrying on. She won't abdicate. Uh, she said um, when she was 21 um, that she devoted herself to the service of her people, whether her life was long or short. Thank God it's long and she will continue devoted in the service of her people. London is once again banking on a priceless brand. This queen, now two years shy of being Britain's longest reigning monarch. A record the next in line can never meet. Susan Normison, CBC News, London.